Saturday and his amazing friend. Salutations, cartoon kinsmen, and welcome back to another badly edited cartoon hosted by some old guy who's nowhere near as funny as he thinks he is, at least according to my comments. It's Saturday and his amazing friends, and we have a special treat for you today. A cartoon that asks the question, what do you do when the network mandates that you create a cartoon about an inanimate cube that happens to be the trendiest thing in years? A multicolored puzzle that, while popular and in the hands of every kid and adult in the country, isn't exactly the kind of thing to build a half-hour show around. Apparently, you inhale a pound of booger sugar and then go about making that cube an all-powerful god and then have it become the demagogue of a small cult of children. That's what was pooped out into our Saturday morning cereal in 1983 and the winner of the recent viewer poll. Rubik, the amazing cube. Seriously, what is wrong with you people? In this iteration, the Rubik's cube is some kind of, yeah, I don't know, demonic entity that can only emerge when the cube is solved. Where have I heard that one before? You opened it. We came. It wasn't just shameless exploitation in the name of capitalism. At least 1% of it wasn't. Rubik's The Amazing Cube was one of the first animated series to feature an all-Hispanic cast, which included two out of three of the voice actors. Hey, that's... progress. What's more, Rubik was voiced by Horshack from Welcome Back, Cotter. What does this mean for this cartoon series' place in history? Absolutely nothing, but it's cool to know. But enough of this introduction because I know what you all came here to see. So let's take a look at Rubik, the amazing cube. The introduction of this show has a quick rundown of the premise. There's this evil guy in a horse and buggy for some reason, even though this takes place in the 1980s, and nobody in the 1980s was driving a horse and buggy, unless you're Amish, so I'm just going to assume this guy was an evil Amish wizard. I say that because it kind of makes me laugh on the inside, and... Well, I know the Amish aren't going to leave a comment telling me how offended they are. Rubik falls out of the back of this carriage and is picked up by the Rodriguez kids, Carlos, Lisa, and Reynaldo, who, having way more patience than I did during the 1980s, solve him. We have such sights to show you. And then they escape the evil Amish wizard before he can turn them into exquisitively crafted wood furniture. Hey, I gotta get all my Amish jokes out of my system now because the evil Amish guy isn't around in today's episode. Honestly, I'm not even sure if he showed up again in this series at all. Which is a shame because, you know, he probably went home and told his friends and family that he found a talking Rubik's Cube and they're all like, What's a Rubik's Cube, Seamus? Have you been sinning again? Also, take a look at Rubik's cute little face, his squeaky voice, and the image of kids flying across the moon, and tell me what other movie inspired this animated series. That's right, Mac and Me. Hello, my name is Rubik. We'll return after these messages. Wow, the breakthroughs that they made with this Barbie doll. You can just take her out into the water? Just like that? Wow, just wow. The the progress they've made so that plastic can go into water. Wow. Next thing you know, you'll be able to comb her hair or something. I know I could never commit violence against another human being because I can barely stab a pouch of Capri Sun with the straw. Is that 
is a really weird sound to represent stabbing a fluid-filled sack with a sharp object. They should make gallon-sized Capri Suns for adults. Why aren't they already researching the logistics of this? Get on it, Kraft! Yep, Capri Sun is owned by Kraft. Now you know. In an annoying bit of meta-commentary that goes nowhere, we open with the Rodriguez kids watching their favorite Saturday morning cartoon. They never say what it is, but I'm sure we can all surmise what they were watching. ...bodies of flesh and bone. Those who remain neutral in the battle were cursed to be born with black skin. This is the Mormon explanation for the Negro race. Ah, that's Spanish for sea mother. One thing you'll notice about this show right away is that outside of Sesame Street, it's one of the first times you'll ever see a bilingual family in cartoons. Dora, eat your deformed little heart out, you football headed freak. Rubik decides to help out by using his powers to give the dog a bath. Oh my god! I can feel drywall in my blood! Someone kill me! Hey, don't be too hard on them, Mama. Look how quickly they cleaned up that kitchen. Rubik, sorry. Ah, oh, it's okay, Rubik. We should have done it when Mom told us. We've got to the amount of time that passed between when she told you and when she exiled the dog was literally less than one minute. I know Hispanic mamas are tough, but... Ay, caramba. The kids decide that to turn Sparky from a zero to a hero, all he has to do is win a local dog show, uh, with the help of Rubik the Demon Cube, of course. This is merit-based affection, and I can't say I'm a fan. Nor was I a beneficiary of the system. What's all that racket down there, you expired tax refund? What are you doing with your life now? I'm trying to watch an entire episode of Rubik the Amazing Cube. Your sister just passed the bar exam and your brother just performed open heart surgery. I swear you'll embarrass me even after I'm dead. Well, that is the plan. The kids bring Sparky to the dog show, and thanks to a little cheating from Rubik's magical black magic powers, the Rodriguez dog is able to put on quite a show. So that wire was up there the whole time. Was another dog planning on doing a high wire act? Or do they have it there just in case? These are the serious questions that kept me out of the good colleges. Wow, who taught Sparky to do that? Pretty snazzy trick, huh? Yeah, I'm not so sure Sparky did that on his own. Oh, you think so? You think that just because your previously established stupid dog who can't do tricks and is now suddenly doing acrobatics and high wire might be getting help from the magical monster cube that lives with you? Do you think so, Lisa? Do you think? Boy, this is neato. Sparky won first prize. Cheating is awesome! However, Sparky's recent performance has attracted the attention of some dog nappers who uses talented pooches to help them commit robberies. They're kind of like the wet bandits from Home Alone, if the bandits were wet because they were being doused with urine. Too late to run. Time to panic. 
Yeah, it's too bad we don't have a magical devil cube to save us. The power! It burns! Rubik infects Sparky with the ancient spirits of evil, and the beloved family dog confronts the attack mutts. But in the kerfluffle, Rubik is knocked out of Carlos' hands, which is odd, because Rubik can fly, and he falls on the ground hard enough to scramble him up in a way that never actually happens to Rubik's cubes in real life. You see, a lot like the South of the 1960s, Rubik's powers only work when the colors are separated. And when he is depowered, the kids must race against time to solve him so that he can save the day. This was, of course, all done to remind us stupid kids in the audience that Rubik was a Rubik's Cube. I hate that this show thinks that its audience is this dumb, but here we are watching Rubik and the Amazing Cube in the first place, so... Yeah. Rubik's colors are misaligned. He's helpless. And so is Sparky. You know what could help? Try picking up the cube and solve it instead of telling us what we can see is going on. While the kids are realigning Rubik, Sparky is kidnapped all because Lisa is slow solving the cube. Boys, get off her back. At least she didn't sit there and just talk about fixing Rubik. She jumped into action, and that makes her the MVP of this dumb show so far. We'll tear your soul apart. Back in order, Rubik conjures a Jetsons car, and the kids take off after the dog nappers. For a group of kids who want to keep their magical friend a secret, they sure are doing a terrible job. find where Sparky is being held, and being the complete Sparky. idiots they are, they make a lot of noise and alert the dog nappers who send the attack dogs after them. Two things. These kids talk way too long and way too loudly about everything before doing anything. It's like they're in Congress. Second, these are the slowest attack dogs I have ever seen. These kids gotta explain everything. Can you imagine living life like this? I'm brushing my teeth. I'm reading a book. I'm walking down the hallway to the bathroom. Carlos is cornered and doesn't have a place to hide, and so Rubik turns him into a poodle. This happens right in front of the dog nappers, but they never talk about it. And that's understandable, because if I saw a floating Rubik's Cube turn a kid into a poodle right in front of me, I'd never mention it, and I don't think that my friend would either. Just like that game of truth or dare at camp that went too far. Sure. Well, I gotta do what I gotta do. <laughs> well, that was uncomfortable to watch. Rubik goes to save Sparky, but Sparky treats Rubik the same way ABC treated him after the first 13 episodes. Ah, uh, yes, the demon cube from the hell dimension. I would gladly sacrifice my freedom to see your evil ended. May you never be found by man or beast again, foul goblin. We'll return after these messages. Once upon a rainy day, Jennifer's mom surprised her with something new to play. Oh, it's strawberry shortcake! Yeah. 
Strawberry Shortcake Musical Matchups is a video cartridge you buy separately to play on an Atari 2600 video computer system. Your parents hook it up to the TV. When you put the Strawberry Land characters back together again, they put on a dance for you. Okay. It's musical, fanciful, and very, very funny. Strawberry Shortcake Musical Matchups video game cartridge is new from Parker Brothers. Video computer system sold separately. You know, all we have to do is change the music and this commercial becomes something else. Carlos finally reunites with Sparky and realizes that the canine has buried the Satan cube. Whoa, I get it! You like Carlos, but you love Carlos the Poodle. Like, show me where you buried the dopey cube, and I'll marry you, you big handsome mutt! What the heck am I watching? Is this kid really flirting with his own dog? This raised all kinds of concerns and possibilities, and I don't like a single one of them. Before Carlos the Poodle can dig Rubik out of hell, the bandits return and he has to retreat. It's probably a good thing too, because thanks to him getting Sparky all worked up, I think he was about to learn a very traumatizing lesson about the birds and the bees. The crooks take Sparky on a job and discover Ronaldo in their van, in a cage. Keep in mind, they didn't put him in the cage. He was just there. Ronaldo decided to hide in a cage with bars you can see through. Estos son los niños más estúpidos que he visto en mi vida. Which is Spanish for... something. What the hell just happened? Carlos, in the meantime, unearths the incubus from the bowels of hell and reanimates him. Shall we begin? Whoa, was that a glitch in the Matrix or something? Nah, that's just the animators. They forgot to change the background. Shocking in such a high quality production such as this. Carlos? Carlos? That can't be you. How did you... It's the magic cube that's been living with us, you big, dumb idiot. Rubik turns Carlos back into a boy and then shrinks him and Lisa for... I don't know, reasons, so that they can foil the big robbery and save their dog. And Ronaldo, if they have time, but let's face it, given the level of intelligence that he's demonstrated so far, he's probably already choked on his own fist by this point. The crooks command Sparky to climb a wall so they can rob a second story, but Sparky is just a stupid, big, dumb, stupid dog who is stupid and can't do it. The crooks decide to train him to be a crook later, and they use the dogs they've already brought along to do the job, so... Why did they bring Sparky in the first place? They hadn't even attempted to brainwash Sparky into a life of evil at this point, so I guess they just assumed he was already evil and would just roll with it, which is... Of course, ridiculous, because there's no way that Sparky would do anything underhanded like steal, or lie, or cheat to win a dog show. Carlos and Lisa save their idiot brother and useless dog from the van while Rubik deals with the robbers. And your suffering will be legendary even in hell. Of course, Sparky, sensing great evil and trying to save the souls of the children before the demon can consume them, scrambles Rubik again and the robbers escape and leave the miniature children at the mercy of the big evil dogs. This, of course, means that it's up to the dumbest Rodriguez child to solve Rubik. Okay, I can suspend my disbelief for a floating, talking, magical cube with infinite power. But I stop at Ronaldo doing anything useful. Oh, I enjoy making you bleed. 
And I'll enjoy making you enjoy it. Look! Ruby Cat, bad man! His power is restored. Rubik possesses the poor Rodriguez dog again and has him kill the robbers. Fatality. And I'm glad Sparky got to be a hero without cheating. But without cheating, you used a malignant Rubik cube from the depths of hell to cheat. You haven't stopped cheating since this episode started. We're proud of you, Sparky. Now a hero, Sparky is welcomed back into the house. Yes. Muy bien. That's Spanish for very bien. I cannot die. I am forever. We'll return after these messages. Boom, 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 Nerf Boomerang. Boom, 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 Nerf Boomerang. Nerf Boomerang, Nerf Boomerang. Easy throwing. I had one of those. I couldn't remember how to properly throw one, but then it came back to me. Nerf Boomerang from Parker Brothers. When you're feeling bored or blue, watch out for the munchies. They find ways of making you munch when you're not hungry. Here, munch this. Here, munch that. Soon you're not just bored, you're fat. <laughs> Make every kid on Earth fat. So weird for a cartoon supervillain, but an everyday goal for the Hershey's Corporation. Racer can go wherever you go. It's a belt that doubles as a racetrack. By using the spring-loaded buckle launcher, you can send the race car speeding down the belt track. Each belt racer sold separately. See, now if you wanted a longer track, you should have been listening to the munchies. Fat kids always had a better time with belt racers. And that's Rubik, the Amazing Cube. Strangely enough, this weird cartoon never hit and lasted only one short season, and now it's just some barely remembered fever dream that 80s kids have every now and again, but now I've reawakened the memory of Rubik and... I have fulfilled my pact. You have served me well, human fool. Thank you, Lord Rubik, and I ask for only one thing in return. My will be done. And now the universe will tremble for mercy, for Rubik the Amazing Cube has returned. The streets will run red with the blood of the non-believers. <laughs> oh no, not a dog! Get away from me! Oh, huh, cool. And I get to keep my evil reward. Strawberry shortcake for the Atari 2600. And that's Saturday and his amazing friends, friends. Be sure to like, subscribe, comment, multiply, divide, and for extra lols, tap that notification icon so you will know when I upload something new and stupid. Want to help me out so I can make more high-quality, lowbrow garbage? Why not become a Patreon by visiting the video description or that box that just appeared in the corner right there? Or you can become a channel member and get these videos early. Until next time, my friends, you are awesome, you are amazing, and you're doing a great job. And I am proud of you, my friend. I am proud of you. Rubik is proud of you, too, and knows you are smart enough to solve him quickly before the dog pees on me again. You will all suffer for this indignity. The greatest pain will be but a hangnail for what I have in mind for you and your pitiful race. Rubik, the reprehensible devil cube, will not be denied. Hello? Hello?